mostly by science teachers who are uncomfortable with it, as being something you need to memorize or something you need to do to make, get a better job, and, or something like that. Science is not presented as something that provides not just a amazing ideas, but a wonderful story, a story that in fact for many scientists competes with the Bible in a very effective way, to, to, be, to be blunt about it. And the problem is, and, and I've gone to a lot of fundamentalist colleges in this country, and I think I've had more impact there when I make the simple statement that you don't have to not believe in God to believe in evolution. And the reason I have an impact there is I have students come up to me that have told me their entire lives, every single Sunday, they've heard the opposite. So the problem science has is, first, that we're not doing a good enough job presenting the, the awe and wonder of science, but secondly, it is being attacked week in and week out by people who fear it. And, and, and against such an attack, the, the data has a very... Uh, when you tell people, you, if you accept this theory, you're not going to believe in God, people will turn their minds off. And young people especially will turn their minds off. And it's not surprising, therefore, that most people in this country don't believe in evolution because they've been told a lie. And that, by the way, that's the way I had. That's the reason I had this. Uh, um, no, no, sorry. That's the reason I had this picture here, by the way. And you should go to the web, go to NASA website. This is a, not a painting. This is a picture. This is a photograph um, from Cassini of Saturn. It's a total eclipse of the sun, a scene from Saturn. But the thing that's most amazing, and this projector doesn't have the resolution to see it. If you look at this picture. In that picture, right there, you'll see a little dot, a pale blue dot, which of course is the Earth. And it seems to me that is the wonder we should be telling our kids about, showing them pictures of understanding our place in the cosmos, the Earth, the center where all of our vital trials and tribulations and political battles and moral battles are being fought, is that little spot, that fragile spot in a dark void. I mean, that's the kind of story we should be telling to inspire our children. And I, really, I agree with you, we're not doing a good enough job doing it. Um, okay, I said I'd come to the front, so. Um, did, you, did you have a question or no? Okay, then we'll go to you. Yes, okay. Hi, I'm Nina Della Salas with the Council of Chief State School Officers and definitely for better education. Uh, I just want to make a note, and someone else mentioned it earlier, about um, sometimes how scientists are kind of, preve kind of preventing the message. Um, one of them is, I would say, the vocabulary that we use. Um, right. I think I was cringing a little bit. I when I said it. believe? When you said I always try believe. not to do that. Yeah, I know. Um, because, I, and I know this from, you know, from my own personal perspective, um, you know, <laughs> faith and, 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 in, and in science, you see it as two ways of knowing. And then when you start using words like, and especially when people don't understand theory, you know, yeah. theory in layman's terms is totally different from a very concise explanation in a scientific world. And how we need to be more clear, and there, herein is where education is very critical, and the message getting across that this is, this is a very precise means. Uh, meaning that we need, we're providing for this. You, you're absolutely right. We have to train ourselves. And that's part of the problem, by the way. I don't think science, scientists are very good. I've argued, and I, but at one point, I got a lot of flack by saying that we do, we do a crummy job in public relations, and we should, be, we should learn from public relations people, because the ID people certainly have. And, and so I said, what? Public relations? Sound bites? Um, but, you know, unfortunately, I think if you want to get people interested, and, and uh, I also happen to think and I've just written recently about this in Scientific American, that teaching is seduction. I mean, everything is seduction. If you want to convince people, the biggest mistake any teacher makes is assuming their students care about what they say. Because <laughs> the minute you make that assumption, you're lost. You have to drag them in to where you are. And I think scientists have to, have to do a better job. And you're absolutely right. We have to be more careful about what we state. And, 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 and so do journalists. And in fact, to respond to the other question, you're right. We tend to maybe to some extent sometimes give scientists too, too much authority when they don't read it. But if you look, for example, at the popular media's reporting on reporting, uh, on evolution, there's only one place I saw everywhere it's, uh, the statement is often made, most scientists believe in evolution or something like that. There's only one, I saw one reporting by, by um, Corey Dean in the New York Times where she said, evolution is the basis of modern biology. Statement, fa a fact. We don't give scientists, uh, off, too often we don't give the, because it, it, is a, it is a series of facts. Evolution happened. It's not, you know. There's a theory of natural selection, but evolution happened. Yes, uh, maybe two more or one more. 
You're the boss. Okay. Uh, thank you this evening. I, uh, speaking of your rhetoric and, and taking the temperature up a little bit, I, I think the uh, comparison of the intelligent design people to the folks in Afghanistan might have been just a wee tad over the top. Uh, uh, I actually think that Tom DeLay's statement is very similar, frankly. I would put it well, on the same level. But anyway. well, having heard George Gilder and John West here at the same table just a few Not months ago. Not all people, but there are statements. Uh, and knowing that a lot of people scientifically, Pascal, Copernicus, Newton, Kepler, Von Braun, Darwin. recently were all faithful believers. That, Darwin too, by yeah, the way. Okay, and Darwin. Uh, the suggestion being that it might be a little tough. I want to go back on one thing with the historical record. You were mentioning eugenics being a pseudoscience. In fact, wasn't it the scientific consensus of the community up till the 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 advent of basically two words in America uh, in world history, that being Adolf Hitler, and pushing the eugenics around that that was an example of scientific consensus pushing bad policy and the only reason I'm bringing it up is that I think going with uh, what the one man was saying back here in part we need to have some other things assist science as we're going forward in the policy realms and that it not be the authoritarian thing and I was just wondering your view on that. Oh that's the only thing you said that I agree with. Uh, uh, um, I absolutely, I want to make this point, it's a good way to end it. I want to make it quite clear. Science should not define public policy. Science should inform public policy. So should other issues. I mean, we, we have lots of important, we're, you know, we're thinking beings in principle. There are lots of things that should come in to make, in, into determining public policy. And I do not think there should be a cadre of scientists that determine public policy. That'd be the worst thing I could think about. What I want, is that sound science be made available to the public and to legislators so that our democracy can function as well as it can. Thank you very much.